Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're going to take the first steps to building our first Windows Store app. Specifically, we'll create a new app using the Windows Store Grid App Template in Visual Studio. We're going to immediately run the app in the debugger just to see it working, just to see what we get out of the box, so to speak. And we're going to navigate around the various pages and see how the various items we see on the page are related to one another. And then we're going to poke around in the code that, that represents the pages that we just looked at. And we're going to discover XAML for the first time. We'll spend the next lesson building that that cheater's guide to XAML that I referred to in the first lesson. And that'll be a lot of fun and it'll, there'll be a lot to learn. All right. So before we, we begin, in the previous lesson, I noted that I wanted to follow the hands-on lab closely. So I wanted to talk about the ontology of the labs itself. Uh, first of all, let's go to this little green icon in the welcome screen to the Windows 8 Camp in a Box. And here we'll see there are uh, a number of individual labs. Each lab, if we click the little HTML button under, underneath it, will be broken up into a series of exercises. Each exercise is broken up into a series of tasks. And if we drill in and take a look at a single task, you can see that there are a, a series of what I call steps. And it's important to understand that I may not follow these st steps extremely closely. So if you're following along, you may want to pause the video, do the exercise, the task, the individual steps on your own and then see what I've done. Uh, just understand that I may not always be 100% in sync. I'll fly through several steps, uh, whereas they may take their time and explain things. And there'll be times where they fly through things and I'll stop down and say, hey, let's stop and let's talk about this for a while, okay? But generally we'll be following on a task by task basis through, uh, the, uh, through the lab. Okay, you may have seen a little, let's see if I can get back to that again. Oh yeah, this little message at the bottom, some it's uh, restricting this web page from running scripts or ActiveX controls. So the easiest way to turn this off is to go to the Tools menu and go down to Internet Options. And the reason why you might want to turn it off is just to not be annoyed during the course of this series. Uh, it is a security risk to turn this off. I'm only doing it for this series. You should only do it if you feel comfortable doing it. If not, you'll see it pop up every time. Uh, but I intend to then, after the series is over, to turn that option back on, at least on my main computer. So I'm gonna bump all the way to the bottom on the advanced tab in the settings uh, dialog and then jump back up to the security section. The second option, allow active content to run in files on my computer. I'm gonna make sure that's clicked. And I'm gonna click apply and okay. Then I'm gonna close Internet Explorer and then I'm gonna open it back up and I shouldn't see that message again. All right, so in this, in this video, what I want to do is cover exercise one, create a Windows Store app, and we'll follow the first three tasks. So in the very first task, it asks us to create a new project with the name Contoso Cookbook. And then we're going to begin running or debugging the application and then walking through the various pages. And then it asks us to familiarize, familiarize ourselves with the project itself and we'll begin the process of doing that as well. Finally, in task three, we'll make a small change to the project. So we'll come back to this screen at that moment. So to begin, I'm gonna open up Visual Studio. And there are a number of ways to create a new project, but ultimately I wanna to get to the new project dialog. I'm gonna make sure to navigate down to the Visual C Sharp Windows Store templates on the left-hand side. I'm gonna choose the Grid App Template, and it's crucial that you select the Grid App Template here in the, uh, the center portion of the new project dialog. And I'm going to choose to name this Contoso Cookbook, no spaces between the two words. And it's going to be placed by default in my documents directory under the Visual Studio 2012 slash project sub subdirectory. And I'm going to click OK. And after a moment, we'll see our project loaded into the main area and in our solution explorer. So the first thing that we're gonna do is actually just run the application by clicking the local machine or the run on local machine button in the toolbar or hitting F5 on your keyboard. You can see you got a splash screen with a default little icon with a box with an X through it. And then we have what looks to be the beginnings of our Contoso cookbook. Now, instead of recipes and then cuisine types, what we see are group titles. So 
group title one, group title two, group title three, and each of the groupings have a number of individual items. Each item has an image as depicted by uh, either a light, medium, or dark gray tile. And then there's these little uh, opaque areas that also contain uh, some text, the item's title and its subtitle. Now this looks right out of the gate an awful lot like what we intend to build with the Contoso cookbook. This is what I was telling you a bit earlier. The, the, uh, the grid app template in particular gets us really close right out of the gate, by default, out of the box, for free, and gets us close to where we want to be. And now it's just a matter of tweaking this project to make it look and feel more like our specific application by adding branding elements, adding our own data, and so forth. Uh, we're also going to need to add some additional functionality using the, uh, the Windows runtime for the various features that we're going to employ. But a lot of work has already been done for us, and it's exciting to see this. In fact, if we were to click on the group title, this looks an awful lot uh, like when we click the French or the Chinese cuisine and it brought up this friendly map image and it had uh, all of the, uh, the various recipes that belong to this given recipe group. And if I click an individual tile or uh, on our main page here, we would see, for example, an image of the finished recipe and then it's a little bit different on this page because we have we'd have three columns. The middle column would have the ingredients and then there's a column to the right that would have the directions. But we still get this navigation left and right. We have navigation up here. Um, if we were to right click inside the application somewhere, we don't get the app bar, so that's something we'll be adding ourselves. Uh, but out of the gate, we have a running application and it looks awesome. All right, so let's take a look at the code that, that makes up this application. If we look in the Solution Explorer here, let me make a little more room for it here. There are uh, three files that have the extension .xaml. Yeah, there's a fourth file and we're gonna get to that in just a moment. But as we launched our application, we saw that grouping of items with a, a group title and then a number of tiles beneath it. That is defined in this group items page .xaml. If we were to open that up and take a look at it, you can see that a XAML designer or the XAML editor has two portions. There's a top portion, which is loading right now, and it gives us this visual designer that looks like the end product. Uh, it looks awful like, a lot like what we saw when we actually launched it on our local machine. And then below that we have this editor portion where we can actually type in XAML code. And there's uh, for example, there is code coloring. Some items are colored in different colors and that have, they have different meanings. There's obviously some comments that are in green. Let's get back to that in just a moment. Uh, after we clicked one of the group titles, that brings us to the group detail page. And here we can see it again in the preview area. And then when we click on one of the individual items, either on this page or back on the grouped items page.xaml, it opens up this third file, the item detail page.xaml. All right, so again, this is just a matter of now making modifications to the XAML that represent these pages. We're gonna to need to bind to different data, we're gonna to need to change some layouts, and then we're gonna enable some additional functionality by adding new XAML code. Now, if we take a look at this XAML code itself, I've already pointed out that the Visual Studio uh, it colors the code in different ways. But you might be looking at this and saying, it kind of looks like HTML, but it's not like any HTML I've ever seen. And that's right. They share a common ancestry, like we'll learn about in the very next lesson. But uh, it is a declarative way of defining a user interface, and we'll learn about that more in the next lesson. Before we wrap this lesson up, let's take that third task and let's perform it. It asks us to open up this app.xaml file and merely change one line of code. Right now, if we take a look at our group detail page, or I'm sorry, our grouped items page, we can see the name of our application, Contoso Cookbook. It looks like it merely borrowed whatever we typed into the new project dialog. But ideally, Contoso and Cookbook would be two 
words, not just one that runs together with no space between them. So it's asking us to make this small change and let's do that right out of the gate. We can do this without any understanding of XAML whatsoever. Let's just open up this app.xaml file. Notice that while it's a XAML file, it doesn't have a visual portion per se, so we just get the XAML editor. And here we're going to look for this line of code near the bottom, and on my file it's line number 21, string x key equals app name, and then Contoso Cookbook, and we're just going to put our cursor here and put a space in between those two words, save that, and then we can run the application again, and on our grouped items page we've made our first branding change to the application okay it's small but we've gotten our feet wet we've gotten our hands dirty with writing some code albeit just one character <laughs> okay so I tell you what let's take our time now go into the next lesson with this information under our belt uh, what is all of this code that we've already said is XAML code yeah, it looks a lot like HTML. It has a tag-like structure, but it's like no HTML that you or I have ever seen. So let's answer the question, what is XAML, in the very next lesson. You're going to need to put your thinking cap on before firing up the next lesson because this is when we start to ramp up seriously quickly. All right? So we'll see you there. Thank you.